And this is the accusation that people have been giving to people like the Apostle Paul or like us that believe that once a person is saved, you're saved forever and that no amount of sin that you do is going to keep you out of heaven once you've already accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, that, that you are saved. But people will take that and twist that and turn that into saying, well, let's do evil so that we could have more grace, right? Let's just keep sinning because it's already paid for. Let's just keep on doing it and doing it and doing it. And this is the attitude that people, by and large, are the reason why they don't want to accept once saved, always saved as a doctrine, because they just have this mindset of just like, well, this is what you're going to do and this is what you're like. I get it all the time. People saying that, oh, well, that can't be true because then you can just, you know, you just do whatever you want. People don't even care. And they always say, well, I know this person that says that they got saved and they're doing this and they're doing this and they're doing that. And they say, who cares? Because I'm saved already. You know, so they always have these examples of people who are living the way that they're trying to ascribe then to everybody that believes that way. And this is where he says, we were slanderously reported as saying this. You know, they, they didn't actually say it, and it's actually bringing a bad name on what they believe because that's not what they believe. That's not what they're teaching. They're not just saying, hey, let's just do evil. Let's just go off and sin because grace is going to abound because we'll just have that much more grace. He's saying that's ridiculous. Let's jump down to verse number 19. The Bible says, Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and that all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Now, this is a very interesting passage. I love this passage. It says that, um, of course, that, that the law shows us, and, it's, and it convicts the entire world because everybody's a sinner. We're all guilty. And by the deeds of the law, no flesh shall be justified. Nobody is, is good in the eyes of God just by keeping the law because nobody can keep the law. But then it says that the righteousness of God without the law, so being made righteous, being saved without the law, by not obeying the law, it says it was manifested being witnessed by the law. So the very law that condemns us witnesses and gives a witness to the fact that your actual salvation comes outside of the law. That it's, that it's not by the law. The law itself witnesses that you need to be saved by grace through faith. That you need to be forgiven. That you need to have a Savior. The law tells us that. Jump down to verse number 28. The Bible says, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. So anyone that wants to try to mix in faith plus works, very good verse. Highlight that verse if you don't have it memorized already. We conclude, the conclusion is that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of law. You do not need the works. It's not faith plus works. We're justified by faith without the deeds of the law, without obeying the commandments, without the law. That is how we're saved. And then uh, jump down to verse number 31. It says, do we then make void the law through faith? Because that's what a lot of people tell you. That the law is void. The law is done away with. We don't need a law anymore. It's, all, it's, it's meaningless for the New Testament believer. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. No, we're setting up the law. Not to be saved by the law, but we are establishing God's law because the law itself bears witness that we need a Savior.